Hello, I'm Mark Baer. Welcome to Muse. My guest today, Jerry Parischika from the Marine Life Studies. And welcome. Morning, Mark. Uh, okay, let's just jump right in. First of all, um, let's discuss what the Marine Life Studies is. Sure, sure. So Marine Life Studies is a local uh, nonprofit organization. We're pretty much centralized out of Moss Landing, but we have a lot of our operations take place here in Monterey. A group of volunteers that literally have a, a pretty solid passion around protecting um, marine life, specific to whales and dolphins. Um, the organization was started by Peggy Stapp a number of years back. And um, again, these are a group of people that have just come together, uh, kind of pursuing a particular passion around uh, conservation. And what has evolved is uh, an organization that not only draws talent from just a large pool of folks, but we're offering additional programs uh, specific to research, um, education, and conservation. What's happened over the, just the last year has just been kind of a phenomenal story for us to, um, again, not only are we drawing just top-notch talent from uh, the public schools, you know, our high school students are very excited about things, but because of Monterey being Monterey, uh, the Bay specifically, there have just been some very significant events taking place that not only allows us to do better research, uh, it continues to allow us to really get involved in experiential learning, which is a lot of what we are, are about. So it, it has just been a pretty magnificent ride. And every couple of months, we meet somebody new from the scientific community that just really helps complete our little portfolio of knowledge as well. Before we get deeper into this, let's talk about you and how you got here. Oh, okay. if you're, a little bit about your background. Well, I, I too, uh, one of these uh, volunteers. Um, about a year or so ago, I attended Whale Fest and um, sitting in the audience and watching these speakers kind of present on some very compelling topics. Uh, I was kind of the inland person, right? Uh, working in the city, yeah, you've just recently moved down here. Yeah, so. just about a year or so. From, from the Bay Area? Exactly. Yeah. And you know, every day commuting in and out uh, from like San Jose to San Francisco, you look out the window of the train, you see trash all over the place, you look at the Bay realizing, wow, that's not too very far from the, the Bay. Um, we've got a serious issue here let alone you know the issues going on with the ecology of the bay and i knew very little about the overall wealth depth uh, complexity of the ocean it was just something i looked at right great waves go out enjoy the water and that type of a thing but after listening to presentations at this whale fest event uh, specifically on the uh, behavioral patterns of whales and dolphins and some of the dangers that they're encompassing out there or encouraged, involved in, um, what we were finding is, wow, there's a lot to learn. So I just went up, introduced myself to a couple of people and said, um, here's who I am. I come from human resources background. I make compensation and benefits analyst. So I get deep in the weeds on data, project management, various things along that line. I said, I want to help you. What's so, uh important about this story is you did this coming from another life, another background, and you jumped in. When uh, Bryant Austin, we had the beautiful whale show here. Mm -hmm. And again, Bryant Austin was involved in a whole different kind of life. He got this calling and he jumped in. And uh, Peggy Stapp, same thing, yeah. came from, uh, is it Minnesota? Uh, she's from Michigan. Michi originally. Michigan, mm -hmm. uh, got here and, and jumped in. So we want to, first thing we want to do is let your story empower others to join this. J just jump in. So this is fabulous. Now, one of the things uh, we are trying to do here at the, Mer at, uh, the Museum of Monterey is to become this focal point for the oceanic community and for the creative community and to bring these two forces together. Mm -hmm. What we've been trying to do here is to create what we call a center of excellence and 
a term that I gleaned from you. <laughs> so now I'm using it, and trying to sound uh, pretty smart with it. But this was your term that uh, that um, that I, I think is aspirational for what we're all trying to do. Um, you and I have been talking over a, a couple of months, and Peggy and various organizations. We had uh, Paul Michelle here last uh, week uh, again with uh, with Noah and figuring ways that these other groups can can work together. Uh, and so let's talk about um, what a collaboration with the museum looks like and kind of what we've got up our sleeves a little bit. Sure, sure. Well, again, what what I was really excited about being able to bring to not only marine life studies, but even potentially to Monterey, um, was I, my particular background and discipline is in the area of project management and recognizing that within large corporations, they do have these things called centers of excellence. And that's where um, departments focus exclusively on ensuring that the information they disseminate or the content is of high quality and is a reliable resource. And because this region is just um, very fortunate to have a large number of marine research labs, that's the excellence, that's the science. Um, what I've come to recognize, because I went down this path, is the public doesn't really have access to the science. Um, all these scientists are top notch in their field and um, are very focused on research, producing findings, writing papers, but the public doesn't really have access. So what Marine Life Studies and, and our project group has come to recognize is there's a huge opportunity for the museum to function as that focal point and uh, of, of um, and call it intelligence and, and findings and be able to present the, the science and present the findings and present the real stories um, as a center of excellence. So what we have been doing as uh, we go out day to day, uh, meeting with the various uh, research groups um, and attending various conferences is we've been building those relationships um, with the scientists and we're gaining recognition and credibility for what we do. What we're looking to do is partner with you folks here to, to actually provide perhaps a, an installation that uh, would run over the course of maybe three to three months or so at a time, uh, giving the public greater access to uh, information and, and actually uh, providing an opportunity for people to really connect with the ocean. So this will have a visual element and it will also have a, uh, a panel and conversational element. Exactly, so, uh, exactly. There, there's just a phenomenal amount of um, activity going on in various areas. I mean, most recently, I think everyone has really been kind of um, caught up in the whale entanglement story. Um, there, <clears throat> there's a, a lot of issues around what's going on um, off the coast of California, off the, coast, off the East Coast. Globally, it's not just a Monterey Bay issue. Um, so what we're striving to do is really bring those stories to the public. We're also really trying to give voice to the marine life. Uh, we have mammals out in our bay, as an example, that um, as monstrous as they are, they're very fragile. Uh, and so as we have all these uh, multiple uses on our oceans, the public needs to be aware of you know, what that means um, to the wildlife. And then at the same time, just because of our disposable society and our single use society, everything that we do uh, really kind of makes a difference out there. So we're trying to make the public aware of that. We think there's a terrific opportunity to bring multimedia, uh, to provide images of you know, what's working out there, what's potentially not working, and actually bring to the surface particular issues uh, of impacts on the ocean, and at the same time bring the scientists and the subject matter experts to the public. Creating change, creating uh, change and be behavioral change, you're emblematic of this because you jumped into something you knew very little when you started, now you know a lot more, and yeah. you're 
making behavioral change and, you, and you're involved. So you're, you're a manifestation of what you're trying to create in, in, in its way. It's been quite a ride. Yeah. <laughs> I've got to say, I mean, one day I'm sitting 18 floors of more, above Market Street, staring across at other buildings and, you know, working with, uh, with my internal clients on highly detailed salary and benefit programs. And next thing I know, I'm out uh, you know, involved with putting together forums, uh, being out on and near the ocean. And just the ocean. tell me about what it's like going out on Peggy's boat. Well, I've, I'll be honest with you. I've gone out on the training aspect of that little uh -huh. boat. Yes. Um, it's a very small boat, 19 foot. Um, I love to sail. My experience is on catamarans. So I, my deal with Peggy is as soon as the boat grows in size a little bit more. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's supposed to be quite the experience because she gets very close. Very, very close. <laughs> and, and, you know, as you see images of um, some of the... Uh, the video that she's prepared. Oh yeah, they're, they're literally right at the surface of the water. And you know, when you have orcas surfacing, uh, not too very far from the bow of the boat, it's like, hmm, that's adventure. Yeah, that's adventure. <laughs> so uh, in, in, our, in our remaining minutes, let's talk about what a center of excellence can be. Because again, uh, the, the museum, we've, we've done a lot of fabulous stuff, but I feel that a museum is very important to community and that with, with um, community involvement that we can do a, a lot more and we can do a lot more in terms of um, really important work. Mm -hmm. And I, I just wanted you to ex expound upon that a little bit. Well, one of the programs that we're looking to bring to the museum is what we call our Ocean Literacy Series. And the intent of that is to really bring very specific um, issues to the public. So as an ag example again, we are designing a, an installation right now uh, that's focusing in on marine debris and whale entanglement. Um, we're also looking at developing other uh, series that uh, just bring to light um, the issue with, or not even an issue, it's just the awareness of the significance of what is called the Pacific Current. That's what makes the Pacific, uh, the, the west coast of the United States, just a phenomenal ecosystem. And that is also why Monterey Bay is such a unique ecosystem in this region. Um, the public, I don't think, really understands that. And that's where I think this museum can be very, very influential, uh, bringing in you know, multimedia uh, via large screen displays. We're pulling together content so that we get little snippets of information. Uh, we want students to walk away with major ahas, and we want to, to create opportunity for families to sit around that table and go, wow, look at this, and what can we do to, to protect that? Well, it's a great vision. I hope we can fulfill it. And just as, as we close out, how do people find you at Marine Life Studies? Uh, how, do, how do people find Marine Life Studies? Certainly. Uh, we do have our web address at um, marinelifestudies.org. Um, we're also highly visible on Facebook. Uh, we are in the process now of setting up our LinkedIn group account. And um, we definitely try to make ourselves present at events where we're invited to either present or to uh, just be present. Okay. Jerry Perez-Chica, Marine Life Studies. Thank you. Thank you, Mark.